Welcome to the famous Acme Comedy Hollywood and to Hollywood Stands Up Open Mic Live! And now, please welcome the host of Open Mic Live, Josh Padgett! Yes! Yes, that's me. Ladies and gentlemen, I am the host of Open Mic Live. I am also the tech guy, and I've got to turn on the microphone on the board. That is my bad. Let's see. It's the white mic on the board. Just was helping and assisting. Fantastic. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, thanks for coming out. It is the last Hollywood Stands Up Open Mic Live. My name's Josh Padgett. I'm your host. This is the last final season finale, ladies and gentlemen. Now, I couldn't dream of a more fantastic open mic lineup. We've got several familiar faces back again to bring us more hilarity. Uh, first up is Eli, followed by Joseph and Alex. Please give a big welcome for Eli. Oh, that's right. That's right. I'm gonna be the first one to close it out tonight. If that makes any sense. It doesn't. It doesn't make any fucking sense. Uh, didn't get the stool that I asked for for my notes and my writer for every open mic. <laughs> what a fucking disaster. <laughs> oh. <laughs> um, I, uh, I don't like when people say that they're allergic to smoking cigarettes. Everyone's allergic to smoking cigarettes. Like, even smokers. Like, everybody's allergic. That's not, like, a way out of having to stick around your friend and fucking smokes. Uh, not a joke, I guess. Um, I uh, I grew up ESL. Like, I got into an English till I was five. Uh, I don't look it, but I'm, ha I'm half Argentinian, half Jewish. Uh, and I have this thing where I fuck up idioms, like, a lot. Like, I can't say them properly. I was just with another comic waiting for a mic to start. This is an example of one. And I said, uh, let's get this rodeo started, which is a cross between let's get this party started and this ain't my first rodeo. Which is ridiculous. Uh, so I do that all the time, not knowingly. And I think the first time I remember doing it, I was in. Uh, I have a coke problem. That's why I did that. Uh, I'm glad I paused to go back and do that about two seconds too late. Um, I uh, yeah, I was in. So I was in high school, and I was in an auto mechanics class, which is already hilarious that I signed up for that class, trying to blend in and be like a dude, uh, which is absurd. Like if you. This is the shape I'm in now, and I'm 27, so take about 12 years off in terms of weight. I mean, the, just imagine how out of place and ridiculous I look. Because that's like a vocational class where like fat rednecks were it, basically, and just a bunch of racist people who like if they stayed in the sun for like 10 minutes have like a sunburn for three months. Um, and while we were in the class, I heard the phrase for the first time that's opening up a whole new can of worms. And I was like, oh, okay, I, you know, I figured out what it was. So we were trying to dismantle an engine. I wasn't. I was just watching everybody and uh, pretending to know what I was doing. And I, uh, while they were in the middle of talking about car stuff, uh, like fucking men, one of them just turns to the other. One of the other guys is just like, uh, yeah, man, you got to be careful. It's something about a head gasket. It'll blow off. And I just go, yep, can of worms. And he finished the whole can. I just said can of worms. To the point where the four people surrounding the engine just turn and look at me, and they were just like, what the fuck are you talking about? And one of them asked, they're like, did you write an ending to this joke? And I said, I didn't. And then I moved on. Um, went to a haunted house recently. It's called Universal Studios. It's like the most empty theme park on the planet. I, I was just talking to Alex about this. He works there, but everyone else, it's like a, it's such a sad place. Like, it's the middle of summer, and I was able to knock out, like, the same ride three times in an hour. It's so fucking absurd. I went in the mummy alone. Like, I was the only one in the cart. And when I got out, I didn't want to pay. Like, I had to get a picture of that. I was like, this is hilarious. There's no one else in this cart but me. So I went to, like, one of those photo booths that they charge. Uh, thank God you're here and laughing at that because I'm at the end of my rope. Uh, and, like, so they charge at the box. It's, like, 12. By the way, does this shape the box? Why am I doing that? <laughs> um, I, uh... Yeah, so it's like it costs fifteen dollars to get a five by seven picture of that, and I didn't want to pay that, so I just took a picture of the picture with my iPhone, and then I left. And that's a great money saving trick for everybody here. Uh, in between jokes, 
what they actually have like a real haunted house in there built into the theme park uh and i went in there with a friend and when we were there was a guy in front of us that was alone which is weird like what that's that, i think that's creepier than anything in a haunted house is a guy who just goes into a haunted house by himself that's like an attraction that goes long after you exit you know what i mean like I just, because when you're with your friends, you get scared. You can, like, turn to each other or grab each other. Whoa, shit, that was scary. But, like, what do you do when you're alone in a fucking... Where did Jeremiah go, by the way? Is he ever going to pop back out? Um, what do you do, like, when you're alone in a haunted house? Do you just, like, walk up and then someone... You're like, ah! You're good. That was great. You know what? Across the board, everybody is just doing a fantastic job. Let's go to dinner. Please, somebody go to dinner with me. Anybody go to dinner. The lamp's on. All right. Jeremiah Watkins, everybody. Give him another applause, right? All right, I'm going to tell the story really quick. I think I told it last week, so uh, it's probably going to make some people uncomfortable. I'm still trying to not be uncomfortable telling the story. Uh, so that's a great setup for this to fail already. Um, I, uh, I recent, no, it wasn't recently. It was a little while ago. I got a ring job, uh, and it wasn't like, I wasn't looking for it. Like, it was bestowed upon me. It was really fucking weird. Uh, and I didn't know, like, just to give you more background, I'm not like a big anal sex person. I'm not one of those guys that's like, we dated for two years and I just sat through the vow with you, you owe me something. Like, I don't care. It's not one of those things. The front side, everything there is great. And so it was surprisingly organic. Uh, and by the way, if you don't know what a rib job is, then you don't deserve to get any of this. Uh, and so we were like making out and then she like kissed her way down, which by the way, that's my favorite part of oral, well, my favorite part about oral sex, oral sex. My least favorite part is calling it oral sex. I don't know why I just got so political about it. But like, you know, like follow these love crumbs to the next destination in case you get lost. I just think it's funny that there has to be like a romantic thing to go from the place you eat food to the, you get it. So, uh, all right, I'm kind of running away, so I need to really finish this quick. So when it happened, I like, it literally, I was just like, oh my God, this is happening right now. Like I had my hands on my like chest and I was just thinking about like, I, I looked like I was in like a coming of age comedy. Like I had my hands here, my eyes were like that. And I was just like, this is gonna be the best summer ever, huh? Like that's what it looked like, it was ridiculous. And then after it was over, I was just like, shit, I wasn't present in the moment to know if I wanted to do it or not. Like if I liked it, if I enjoyed it. So like seven minutes later into the like sex portion of the sex, I, uh, I was like sheepishly asking, like, hey, remember that thing you did? Well, let's go back to seven minutes ago. And she like called me out on it. She's like, oh, that thing I voluntarily did myself? Uh, yeah. And then a friend of mine asked me, he's like, what position were you in for her to do that? Were you like bent over? Yeah, that's how I take all my blowjobs, doggy style. Like, why the fuck did you land on that conclusion? Good night, everybody. Thank you for that, Eli. I love uh, I love um, Hollywood Studios uh, because every single ride there is the same thing. It's like you get on it and they're like, oh no, something went horribly wrong. Like every single ride, it's the Jurassic Park or the Mummy or the Simpsons or whatever, like two other rides they have up there. It was like, something went horribly wrong with the ride. It's like the haunted house or whatever. Oh no, something. I wrote a letter of complaint to the management. I'm like, a lot of your rides are breaking down. Can I say my favorite thing real quick? Every ride you can say your favorite ride. thing real quick in two minutes. All right, Harris. Or four <laughs> minutes. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we've got three more comedians coming up. Joseph, then Alex, then Jeremiah. Please give a big welcome to Joseph Larkin. Can't really go back to amusement parks after a guy just said he got his asshole eaten out. <laughs> so just save it, Alex. Don't worry about it. No one is going to be paying any attention to you because we're all going to be thinking about somebody's asshole. I don't know. I'm pretty insecure, and uh, when I'm with a woman, merely taking my shoes off in front of her is kind of dicey. Like, oh, what if my feet smell? I don't know what I would do if she went downstairs and just started chowing down. I'd be like, get the fuck out of there. What are you doing? <laughs> Smell the germs and other guys' semen. You don't want that in your mouth. Anyway, uh, good evening, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. I'm Joe Sparkin from Sinusana, coming to you for the final time, I guess. This is the very last open mic here. Yeah. Not on one on Friday? Oh, that's too bad. Let's fuck some shit up, everybody! Yeah! 
So we just tear these fucking seats out and set the shit on fire. Rodney King! We need to avenge him. Uh, anyway, speaking of bums, uh, I run a bit. Yeah, whatever. Rodney King was on, like, drugs. Fuck him. <laughs> like, he's not, yeah. Whatever. He's not a working class hero, okay? He was a fucking degenerate who got beaten. Happens. Happens all the time. Anyway, uh, I should be beaten, but I haven't been. I've escaped my beatings. Anyway, let's go back to a story about, about bums. So I run a comedy club, not unlike the Acme Comedy Theater, called Dangerfields 3, not affiliated with Dangerfields 2. And um, it's just a uh, comedy club that I run in my apartment. This is not a joke. It exists, for those of you who haven't been there. And uh, whenever I first started it, a, a homeless guy from the neighborhood came and watched one of the earlier shows. And uh, he really got a kick out of it. He didn't steal anything. He didn't take any beer, which we were giving away for free. So I was like, oh, this guy's cool. He can come back. And sure as shit, he did come back. And he came back for another show, and he asked if he could have three minutes on the show. And me being me, of course I gave him three minutes. He headlined that show. Surprisingly, did a set about snowboarding. No one saw that coming. <laughs> And he fucking killed, I'm not going to lie. He did better on stage then than I've ever done on stage. So anyway, the dude disappeared. Like, I didn't see him again for like two months. And then he showed up last week at my venue. And I said, hey, his name's Clarence. I said, hey, Clarence, where the fuck have you been, man? He said, oh, well, I got arrested and I was in jail. No shit, right? Duh. And uh, the very first place I came to when I got out of jail, it was Dangerfields 3, your home. I was like, oh, that's great. And he said that when he was in jail, he kept thinking about how nice I was to him and how I gave him three minutes. He just wanted to come back and do three minutes. Not so different from us now, is he, guys? Not really. And so uh, I couldn't give him the three minutes because I wasn't running the show that night. But I said, uh, hey, I'm going to take a walk to the 7-Eleven. And he goes, hey, can I come along? I was like, sure, why the fuck not? Let's go. So he and I were walking down to the 7-Eleven, and he, uh, he told me his story. He told me about how he was from Newport, Rhode Island, and he moved to L.A. because he didn't want his parents and the rest of his family to see that he had become a drug addict and an alcoholic. And he, he didn't want to ask them for money anymore because he was ashamed of himself. And uh, in a weird way, he and I kind of connected. And uh, I thought, oh, this guy's, this guy's okay. He's all right. Uh, he's actually not unlike, say, my dad. My dad was a hardcore alcoholic and a compulsive gambler, and his activities put my family into uh, dire straits financially for many years. Uh, I still have, uh, my sisters and I still have to be able to lean on his house. But anyway, um, <clears throat> I, I never hated my father, though, because I understood it. Yeah, I understood his alcoholism. Uh, he was married to a woman for 25 years, and she died. I mean, it makes sense that he would become an alcoholic and, and all that other stuff. So I, I understood Clarence. I got it. I, I don't. I, I couldn't. I can't hate my father. I don't hate Clarence. So when we went to the 7-Eleven, I gave Clarence a bottle of water. And as we were walking back, he said, "Well, I don't need water. What I need is a beer." And uh, having dealt with an alcoholic father, I know that you need the alcohol to survive. So. We went back, I gave him a beer, and uh, I, felt, I felt pretty good about myself. I felt like, I'm not, I'm not such a bad guy. Me and, this, me and this homeless guy connected. And like I said, I don't hate Clarence like I don't hate my father, but the main difference between my father and Clarence is that my father didn't steal my portable CD player! <laughs> Clarence did! Fuck you, Clarence! You piece of shit! You ever hear that name? I'll kill you! Thank you so much. Enjoy the rest of the show. Ladies and gentlemen, our next comedian is Alex C.B., then followed by Jeremiah, then Alex Hooper. Please welcome to the stage, Alex! That was a great uh, touching story by Clarence. I was homeless actually for nine months. Uh, and, uh, you know what the worst thing about being homeless is? The, the worst thing about being homeless is uh, is not having a home. 
Tony Rose. <laughs> so uh, I'm. Uh, so I'm short. I'm, I'm just going to go out and say it. I'm short. I know a lot of people don't see it, but I am. Uh, and it's funny because I, uh, I I realized that me and my cat have something in common. Like he, he stopped aging at age seven, and I stopped aging at age seven. But his seven is 29, and my seven was seven. <laughs> so uh, kind of sucks. Uh, I just turned 48. I mean, uh, and I, and I look pretty good, I think. You know, uh, yeah, my whole family's like my mom's 70. I swear to God, she's 50. My sister is 49. She still gets carded. No shit. Now it's like we were born these beautiful, short, miserable people. Because actually, I'm pissed off that I'm 48. I didn't think it was gonna get this far. I'm like really pissed off. I was like, motherfucker, man. I wanted to go at 35, easy. I was like, you know, just go, just you know, maybe get hit by a bus or something. But you can't do that unless the insurance company writes off on it. So uh, now that I'm 48, but you know, my, my bucket list has changed. When I was young, I'm not sure if you guys have this. You guys seem like younger guys than me. But when you're young, your bucket list is like, hey, you know, I, I want to go to the moon. You know, I want to be a fireman. You know, I want to be a football player. You know, when you get to your 20s, like you guys now, I'm sure your bucket list is a little different, but it's more adventurous, right? I mean, you guys probably want to go parachuting. You know, you know, probably want to see the Grand Canyon. Go fuck a model, I have no idea what you guys want to do these days. Uh, now, my bucket list is like completely strange. It's like, it's like no, I, I want to be able to pay my phone bill. You know, I want to be able to pee standing up one more time. You know, it's like I want to have sex with an amputee. It's just completely out of the way. Wrote a book. Uh, stupid. It's a stupid book. But, uh, it's, called, it's called World War II. I wasn't there. And uh, I'm thinking of writing a sequel. Vietnam wasn't there either. Who knows? That's a stupid joke. Like lesbians, love lesbians, but not for the obvious reason, uh, gentlemen. I like lesbians because they conserve water by not shaving their arms, their armpits, or their facial hair. God bless them. They really help in this environment. Uh, I, I tried a fish oil last night. I'm telling you, the fish oil really works. Because this morning, I put that a salmon. Thank God it was going downstream. You know what I'm saying? Ooh, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, went to a smart college. You know, you know, you go to a really smart college when the graffiti in the bathroom is in Latin. So, for a long time, I didn't know my dad's name. My mom, I come from a broken family. My mom, it was me, me, my mom, my sister. And for a long time, I thought my mom, my dad's name was absent or none, depending on what welfare check my mom was writing on at that point. Yeah. So I went to traffic school the other day. <laughs> I'm in the back, of, and this guy behind me, he's like, uh, you probably heard this before, but there's a guy behind me, and he's like, tapped me on the, on the back. He goes, hey, hey, don't you want to know why like, one line traffic moves faster than the other? I'm like, dude, just sober up, leave me alone, let me do my thing. Come on, man. Don't you want to know one line traffic moves faster than the other? I'm like, dude, Come on! Don't you want to know? The one-line traffic was faster than the other. I'm like, why? Less cars in that lane. Think about it. <laughs> Thank you. So, uh, don't go out much. Uh, had three marriages. My last marriage was to an Irish woman. And, uh, honest to God, true story. I walk in, I was a little drunk. And uh, she goes, this is, and by the way, this is my best Irish accent. I hope it doesn't offend anybody. That's it. That's it. You have to make a choice now between me or the booze. Me or the booze. And I was really drunk, and I looked in her eyes, and I said, you know what? I, I pick you. And I swear to God, she goes, wrong answer. And she threw a beer in my head. <laughs> no kidding. Thank you very much, guys. Keep it going for Alex, ladies and gentlemen. And not next to it, Jeremiah, then Alex, then Pedro. Please welcome back to the stage. You saw him earlier with the school, Jeremiah Watkins. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
What about us a t-shirt guy? Thanks! <laughs> cool. Uh, guys, women used to have it so easy. Then they had to open their mouths and ruin everything. They used to have to do three things. Three things. Cook, clean, and make babies. That's it. Like, if you give that same mom to a guy, like, they would think it's a scam or something. And it's like, whoa, whoa, wait. You want me to cook, clean, and make babies? What's the catch? Well, uh, you're going to be viewed as mentally inferior to a woman the rest of your life. And it's like, that'd be awesome. I'd love to just have three things to do list cook, clean, make babies. That's it. Also, as I used to, um, I really like the way that, that uh, the women used to dress, you know? They wear long, classy, flown dresses. Like, no midriff showing or anything. As a man, you'd just be just like curious. You'd be like, I wonder what's. Uh, going on underneath there. I wonder what she, what kind of goods she has. But now it's just like so blatant, like the way that the women dress, it's just like it's so tight, so revealing. It's like Because you're trusting a complete stranger with your life because you have to tandem jump. Like you have to go with somebody 20 times before you can go alone. Like who came up with that number? 20 times that you have to go with somebody? I think it was a lonely, creepy guy who came up with that number. It's like, hmm. I know you want it done it four times, but come to Papa 16 more times. 16 more. It's like, he's just like whispering weird things in your ear whenever you're falling through the sky. You're just like, on the time of your life, you're like, ah! Oh, this is awesome! This is so cool! You smell really nice right now. Ah, can we please not talk about this right now? So much adrenaline! Oh, this is so cool! What are you doing later for dinner? Mm. Ah! Ah! Only seven more times. Oh, well, I really want to be a pro skydiver, so, all right. Ah! Ah! I know you didn't see anything this time. I'm coming home with you!
Give it up for Jeremiah, who uses the whole stage, ladies and gentlemen. 36 feet wide. Uh, coming up next, we have Alex, followed by Pedro. Then Magic, please welcome to the stage, Alex Hooper. That's two favorite things. Yeah. Jeremiah, I don't want to ruin your joke, but you do not have to go skydiving 20 times tandem before you do it. I've gone skydiving, and you can do it with after your first jump. That's... But that's okay, because most people don't know that, so you can totally sure? still do it. And if you believe it, they will also believe it. Are you sure, though? I'm positive. You, 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 have, you have actually done it? Yeah. I think it's based on statement. It could be, yeah. I did it in Pennsylvania, so... This is funny, right, guys? Talking about my 21st birthday when I jumped out of a plane? There's jokes about this. I actually, I was, I'm sad Joseph just left because he reminded me of a story, um, him dealing with that homeless man. Um, I'm way too kind to undeserving people, I feel like. And a couple of years ago, I was in, uh, I was on a particularly crowded bus and a group of homeless drifter kids got on and one of them didn't have a dollar, so I paid his fare. And you know, he was trying to be really nice and he offered me a beer and I refused it, not because I wasn't drinking, just because it was a really shitty beer and I didn't want it. But he was like, no man, Homeless man offers you a beer, you take the beer. Looking back, that logic is completely flawed. But at the time, in my head, you have to realize it made perfect sense. So there we are, like me and this group of homeless drifter kids, just like drinking and publicly transporting ourselves in the same direction. And we get off the bus, and me, homeless beer drinker slash brilliant decision maker, thinks, why do I invite this guy back to my house to smoke some weed? He's young, he's hip, he's got dreadlocks on a cool mercenary jacket. This guy probably wants to smoke some weed. So cut to five minutes later, we're back at my house smoking weed. He's in my house with all of my things. I'm giving drugs to a homeless braggart. At this point, I am on top of the morality world, okay? I feel great about every decision I have ever made and will ever make. I am a great person. It was at this point, though, that uh, Gray, that was the name, by the way, his name was Gray. Like, I never met someone named Gray. I'm like, how cool is this guy? Like, how are you homeless? Your name is Gray. You're black. You have dreadlocks. You are cool. I guess that kind of makes sense. Look, that was a terrible moment for me as a person. I'm talking about what a nice person I am, and then I go and make a stupid racist comment. Anyway, he goes upstairs, Gray, he goes upstairs, and uh, I spend, me and my roommate, sit and listen to his girlfriend tell us about all the injustices of the Zimbabwe government, which, if you're unfamiliar, are numerous. That okay? <laughs> shit is fucked in Zimbabwe, apparently. Um, and he's up there like 20 minutes. And so I finally go to check on my knock on the door. I'm like, hey, man, are you okay? He's like, yeah, I'll be out in a minute. So I go back downstairs. Ten more minutes go by. His girlfriend goes upstairs. Another ten minutes go by. Then they both come stumbling down the steps. And I'm like, yeah, I'm sorry. We just got to go. We got to go. I went up to the bathroom. There was mud everywhere on everything, like mud on the toilet, mud on the sink, mud on the bathroom floor. It looked like that scene in Encino Man when Brendan Fraser melts in Sean Astin's house for the first time. That's exactly what it looked like in my bathroom. And I was like, what happened to this guy? Like, he was verbal and communicative and totally fine. And then he walked out of my house, like sick as hell. And then I realized just how cool Gray was. Gray was so cool that he used me to shoot up heroin in my bathroom. That is what happened. I let a homeless man in my house because he really needed to pound some H. He needed to give the veins an old slam a slam And I was just like, are you, are, you, are you good, Gray? Are you good? Because I trusted you, man. I trusted you. I brought you in my home, and I tried to be nice to you, and you used me just so you could shoot up smack in my house. Like, that's not cool, man. I was looking at this guy like a future revolutionary. Maybe that was just my white guilt. I don't know, but I was looking at this guy like, man, I thought you were so cool. But you know what? I realized that is completely on me for wanting, for some reason, to prove to a homeless guy that I was also super fucking cool. Like, that's what it all came down to, is I just saw this homeless guy, I was like, this guy's cool. I want to be like this guy. So ridiculous. Guys, uh, I've been losing weight. Been hitting the gym a lot. Jim is my new male lover. We've been hitting each other a whole lot. All right, I'll tell one more thing and get out of here. I've, um, every time I go to uh, the pharmacy, I've been playing this new game where I uh, listen to when the person in front of me says their name to get their prescription, and then I quickly Google that person. Turns out the people that shop at the Costco and Marina Del Rey haven't done shit. 
They are losers, no awards, no accolades, not even a felony. What are you even picking up a prescription for? Obviously, no one needs you alive. That's good enough for me. Thank God. Come out for Hey, girlfriend! Fantastic, ladies and gentlemen. My girlfriend was watching that, so I'm very proud. Girlfriend was watching. He did his whole set ranting about home. Inspired by another comic set. That's what open mics are about. Community among comics, right? That's what we're doing here. I also love that you called yourself a homeless beer drinker slash brilliant decision maker. Print up those business cards, please. Alex Hoover, homeless person, beer drinker, slash brilliant decision maker. Coming up next, we have Pedro the Magic and Tim. Please welcome Pedro! <laughs> wow, that's so awkward. Oh my god. I hope you enjoyed that. Whoever's watching at home, hope you enjoyed that awkward handshake. I'm on six screens at open mic. Is that that's not ridiculous, right? That's that's absurd. That should happen. Uh, guys, if I, uh, my body feels weird right now, uh, and I'll explain why. Uh, I just started a, a new job, which is just fine. It's like, I, I, I like it. Uh, it's nice. Uh, but what happens is uh, I leave in the morning, and I eat breakfast before I leave. So I leave, and then I go to my job, and then I leave my job at like 4 or 5, and then I don't go home because I want to go to open mics, uh, and I would be driving out of my way to go home, so I don't eat dinner because I don't want to buy food out so but but my job has a kitchen where they had just have snacks which is really nice but basically for the last three days I, I have eaten in total like 190 granola bars which <laughs> like, I think my body's just confused at this point you know what I mean because granola bars are healthy but not like a lot of them you know and it's like if you're well, my body's just like why are you binging on that like why why is that the thing you choose uh, anyway so I feel really fucking weird right now uh, it's probably going to affect my words a little bit. I don't know. I don't, what, what happens when you eat 190 granola bars every three days? You know what I mean? Like, does it fuck up your brain? We'll see. We'll see. I don't know. It's going to be fun. Um, I, um, I went to the grocery store uh, recently. I bought, bought groceries, and, uh, which is what you do at a grocery store. And uh, I, uh, I, I, as an experience, I would rank that like a C minus, maybe. You know, because like, I like having food, but I don't like a lot of the stuff that happens at grocery stores. Like, I don't like... When you when you go to the checkout aisle and you, you pay that like I don't like that I get my accidental dose of celebrity gossip news there you know what I mean like I don't I don't like when that happens because I don't I don't follow up on that stuff I don't like keeping up with it but I all I have to do is turn 45 degrees to my left and suddenly it's like oh Melissa Rivers wants him back that's a thing I know now thanks um, and uh, I saw this one that there's this one magazine that blew my mind. Uh, it was the uh, Celebrity Meltdown Edition, and it had the name of the celebrity and then the, the fuck up thing that they did. So it was like Charlie Sheen, Cocaine, Khloe Kardashian, DUI, Lindsay Lohan, Cocaine, DUI. And then the last one just was amazing. It was uh, Mary Tyler Moore, Brain Tumor. I don't, I, don't think, I don't think that counts in the same category as the others, you know? Like, uh, oh, did you hear about Mary Tyler Moore? She got a brain tumor? How irresponsible can you be? I mean, she has kids. God, she's supposed to be a role model. Just going out, having brain tumors. You know, God, that's just what a degenerate. All right. Um, I, uh, I have a really boring life, is, is the thing. I have such a boring life, and, and all I do is, is uh, go, go to open mics. Uh, and uh, the other day, I got off work. And uh, this that two days ago, I got off work, and uh, and I went to an open mic, and it was starting at 7:30, and I got off at like four, and so I just sat at a coffee shop and just waited for like three hours, just doing nothing. Like at first, I was like, oh, I'll edit my screenplay, and then I re remembered that I've never written a screenplay in my entire life because I'm a talentless hack, and uh, and so I just fucking sat. And, and texted all of my ex-girlfriends. That's the first thing I decided to do. Because you can, like, that, that's, that, having a phone uh, really assuages, like, being lonely. Because you can just text every single person you've ever known and be like, hey, what are you up to? And, like, and you just bother them. You're just in their life for that minute, you know? Um, but so I just sat there, and, and then eventually I, like, took a shit in their bathroom, and then I left. And at no point did I buy a single thing. I just... Was just, it didn't and and th by the way, this open mic has been very weirdly homeless centered, and so this joke is about to be about homelessness. Uh, and I I realized that like 
And I'm like a couple of broken dreams and like 15 years away from being like a crazy homeless person that hangs out at coffee shops all the time, you know what I mean? Like, and in terms of contribution to society, we're basically exactly the same. And like, maybe the homeless person contributes a little bit more, because when you see them, you like think about the unfair distribution of wealth in this country, you know? And you're like, oh, homeless is a problem. You know, poverty is awful. Like, you think about that. With me, it's just like, no, I don't want to read your spec pilot. You know what I mean? Like, it's, it's awful. Um, I'm, I'm just, I'm so, I'm so lonely, and I'm starting to bore myself, like, because I just hang out alone. And and because like when I was, uh, I just moved here. When I was back home, I was still a boring person, I, I think. But like, I was with other boring people. And we hung out together, and like, we could just not realize we were boring. Like, we would just smoke pot out of the bong we named. So that's stupid. And then we would be, I would be like, oh my god, I'm so high, and he'd be like, oh my god, what a coincidence, I'm high as well. What are the odds that we both smoked pot and now we're both high? And that was fun for me. But now I'm here and I'm just like, wow, this is a fucking, what a disaster. Anyway, <laughs> thanks a lot, you guys. Let me finish this. Yeah, hey, go. All right, guys, give it up for our next three comedians Magic, then Tim, then Chase. Please welcome to the stage Magic. I felt bad. I was like, man, this dude just gave me his laptop. He died. We didn't have his laptop. 
and go back to my old porn site is 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 bad. Like I'm just being honest. It's, it's, I felt kind of bad. That I was like, okay, I got to push out my out my mind so I can do what I got to do to move on. You know, I'm trying to get over this squirrel who's still in my head. <laughs> Man, so um, oh hey 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 buddy, hey. you got to you got hey, changes why during the summer just. Change this whole little thing right here. Just, <laughs> this thing is, it's been used. It's been well used mic right here. But um, I'm going to wrap that up. And uh, you guys keep doing what you do. Have a great summer of practice. Practice and practice some more. Thanks, Magic. Practice all summer, but don't hit any squirrels. Remember that. Uh, coming up next, we have Tim, then Chase, then Steve. Please welcome to the stage, Tim Snook. How's everyone doing? The last of my of the school year, I guess. Uh, alopecia areata. I was just diagnosed with that two days ago. Does anyone know what this is? No. Okay, let me enlighten you. For no reason at all. You just start getting circular bald patches on your beard and your scalp. No reason. I I hurriedly went to the dermatologist to find out about this because I'm like, we need to fucking stop this hair loss for no reason. I wake up in the morning, I look in the mirror, another part of my manhood is gone on my beard. Uh, she tells me, mm, there's no real cure, there's no real cause, we don't know what it is, there's no way to stop it from happening in the future, it just goes away on its own. Sure, we have an ointment that can stop what, you, what bald spots you have now, grow back some hair, but we, that can't guarantee what happens in the future. Let me ask you this. How shitty as a dermatologist can you be at your job that you're allowed to get away with this answer? You have a PhD and you're allowed to say that. Like, you can't be a construction worker and say, I'd like to put those two by fours up for your rafters, but there's just no way of knowing if they're gonna fit. I just don't know. I'm not sure. Our national debt is out of control, isn't it? Something like 16 plus trillion dollars, some insane number. We are officially at Mr. Burns numbers of national debt, aren't we? Is that some 1993 episode of The Simpsons, we would have just laughed because it would have sounded outrageous if he asked for 16 trillion dollars, but now it's real. I looked it up too. It's not China that we owe the most money to. You know, the, nat the largest holder of US debt, this is true, is the US Federal Reserve. We owe ourselves? That's bullshit, right? Like we could just sweep some zeros under the rug, right? <laughs> like take a cheat day. Like why is the Federal Reserve being such a dick? Can he just be like, let's cut it in half, you know? But no, he doesn't. He's like that dick roommate you have. And he's like, uh, rent seven fifty two eighty three, and you give him a check for seven fifty, and he's like, no, 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 seven fifty two eighty three, and he rips the check up and makes you pay it again. You're like, no, 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 Fed, Fed, I'll get you next time. No, Federal Reserve is a douchebag. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> is it weird that my worst nightmare is that I fell in a body of water with my iPhone in my pocket? <laughs> As a 28-year-old male, I'm like terrified of that, like not sinking my contacts originally. Like, no, don't worry about like not owning a home or never making it in the industry. It's that I fall in a pool at a party with my phone in my pocket. I have literally woken up in a cold sweat after that. I also like that, uh, I also actually don't like that I'm like, at night I'll be checking email while I'm in my bed with the charging, the charging cord into my iPhone and it falls out or it's not long enough and I just, I wonder, can they just make a phone with a cord that's permanently attached? <laughs> Is that too hard to do? And I realized I just want a telephone. That's all I want. <laughs> Have you realized that uh, straight people love it when gay people make jokes that emphasize how gay they are? You know, they might say something like, oh honey, he's more queer than a $3 bill. Like, it's disarming, it's endearing, and they love it. But I realized this would not work with the roles reverse, like a straight guy trying to talk to a gay friend, like, just to like show him how straight he is, like, oh, dude, I woke up hungover on the couch today, took three shits, played some Xbox, I actually beat off during one of those shits, high five, hat trick. It wouldn't work that way, right? Like, it's something I uh, observed, I didn't realize that. <laughs> Alright, it's a new joke, I'm gonna leave us with that. 
I've been in an abusive relationship with my dental hygienist. I'm afraid of the judgment that's about to come. And I realized someone needs to flip the tables on this bitch. Like, someone needs to judge her. And I work in post-production for my day job, so I feel like I could judge her DVD collection. I'd like to just stand there at her bedside when she wakes up and be like, Cindy, Kate Hudson movies? That's it? That's all you got? There's no Paul Thomas Anderson? No Scorsese? Look, if you don't mix up the variety, you're going to get what's known as shitty movie plaque buildup. And I can't help you then, man. It's surgery. And then where are you going to be? I'm going to have to put you out. I'm going to have to get some variety in there. All right, that's me. I'm Tim Smith. Thank you very much. Give it up for Tim and our mutual hatred for dental hygienists. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Chase, followed by Steve and Stu. Give it up for Chase! Thanks, guys. I, um, I was looking through some old yearbooks, and uh, I was like reading people's comments, and I feel like the funniest one people write is when people are like, you're great, never change. And it's like, never? <laughs> like, I'm 15 right now. I have top and bottom races. <laughs> I've just been kicked off the university volleyball team. I'm failing pre-algebra. Like, I hope something changes <laughs> soon. Tomorrow, even. That would be ideal. I go to the 10-year reunion, and everyone's like, Chase, what's new? Guys, literally nothing. I uh, haven't changed one thing. Still just crushing uh, orange fanas in the AMC parking lot. <laughs> Living the dream. Living <laughs> the dream. Uh, this mic smells like success. <laughs> <laughs> smells great. <laughs> um, I was uh, I was talking to my friend. He just went on his honeymoon and uh, he went backpacking through Europe. He was like, yeah, we started in Italy, ended in Finland, just went all through. I was like, that sounds exhausting. Like, Europe is huge. Uh, I think if I ever go on a honeymoon, I'm just going to go backpacking through Burbank. Yeah. Like, just uh, hit the hot spots, started islands, ended Ikea. Good times. Good times. Um, I realized today that I'm sexist or like not a feminist. <laughs> I don't know. I was uh, sitting outside. I work at like an outdoor mall and I was sitting outside on my break and I saw like this really hot um, like female security guard walk by and I was like, who ordered a stripper? <laughs> like that was my first thought. <laughs> but then like she obviously wasn't a stripper but like who would be ordering like a security guard mall stripper? <laughs> They're like, uh, all right, we've got nurses, um, we've got police women. Do you have a security guard mall officer? That's what I really want to know. That's what really gets me going. All right, that's a new one. Um, I saw a girl with a wrist cast. That feels dramatic. I don't, I don't trust that. You know, <laughs> that's not necessary. I feel like the only way to like injure your wrist is by jerking off your grandfather. Like, that's the only, it's literally the only way. Like how else do you hurt your wrist? You don't. <laughs> you don't. I feel like the time to like break a bone in your body is just over. Like I've never broken anything, but it's too late for me. Uh, like, you have to do that when you're a kid. Yeah, I can't. <laughs> Don't even, can't even think about it. You gotta be a kid, miss a few weeks of school, come back with like a sick neon blue cast that just everyone in their mom wants to sign. <laughs> and like, because kids always break in a cool way. Everyone's like, oh, Devin, what happened? And he's like, oh, I was doing a triple Ollie while shooting a super soaker while watching Snick while making out with my girlfriend, and I just fell. And everyone's like, ah, oh, Devin, that's so tragic. You're still so cool. But like, it's the opposite when you're an adult, you know? Like, you just kind of have to drag yourself into an office. Everyone's like, all right, Sheila, seriously, stop drinking. Um, it's not, it's not cute anymore. <laughs> Um, that's my time, guys. Have a great summer. Great.
job, Chase. Give it over, Chase. Also, not only the first female comic of the evening, but the first comic who saw the light and then got off stage. Guys, you don't have to use all five minutes. If you see the light, you don't have to come up one other thing. Uh, she's a pro, that's right, professional. Uh, I broke my wrist in high school playing the tuba. Um, and the thing about that was it's really itchy inside there. <laughs> And I was trying to scratch it, and I lost like a quarter, and it was in there for until for like the six weeks until they cut it open. It was neon green. And then when my friend signed it, he wrote, "Hey, you have a quarter?" I was like, "Great, thank you very much." Uh, ladies and gentlemen, our next comedian come to the stage, much funnier than myself, Steve. Then Steve and Ryan, please welcome Steve Schneider. Yeah, I broke a tuba player's wrist once for being such a fucking nerd. I was in the band myself. Uh, I can hide from the cameras. <laughs> no one can see me now, internet. I'm safe. I don't want I don't want this shit to get out. I'm working on my Conan 7 right now. I don't want it to. They say you should treat comedy like it's your job. If I were treating comedy like it's my job, I would have stolen a bunch of shit and quit by now. <laughs> Fucking awful job. I'm gonna write a suicide note that just says you win. Uh, what am I doing? Uh, do a little online dating these days. Chase Bernstein. <laughs> Chase Bernstein helped me write this joke, guys. Uh, but she reminded me of it. Uh, yeah, I, I, I'm into something kind of specific. I, I, I like a very religiously oriented elderly women. So I'm going to christianshingles.com. <laughs> Christian Shingles. <laughs> no, just like everyone else, I, you know, like everyone else, I'm looking for a cheesecake factory in the streets and an Arby's in the sheets, guys. Just like everyone else. I'm going to just try that with the different combinations of <laughs> restaurants until I finally hit that one. That works. I think I got a long ways to go. Um, someone was asking me if I knew Rebecca Weinstein lately. I was like, yeah, I know Rebecca Weinstein. They kind of gave me a look. I'm like, yeah, but you know, not Talmudically. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a pretty tolerant guy, pretty open. I, I feel like everyone should have the right to have sex with whoever they want, as long as they don't force me to stay out of it. I don't want in it if it's hot. Uh, someone told me, uh, Steve, don't shit where you eat. I think that leaves a lot open, though, you know? <laughs> Maybe we should change that saying. Don't shit where you eat. Don't shit where you sleep either, guys. Don't shit where you watch television. Don't shit where you drive your car. Don't shit where you go to work. How about this? If it's not your designated shitting place, just don't shit in it. <laughs> Let it go with that. <laughs> uh, I decided to be one of these uh, these comedians that uh, I'm gonna expose some of my vulnerabilities on stage, guys. I hope this is a safe place. Some of my vulnerabilities. Uh, extreme heat and cold. Uh, blunt and edged weapons. Firearms. Bacteria and viruses. Hot Asian pussy. That's the main one. That one gets me all the time. I'm a little sad that the Game of Thrones season is over. Uh, not only do I love that show, it's kind of my only conversational in with regular dudes. Like, I can't talk sports with guys. I don't care about sports. I don't follow sports at all. I think it's kind of creepy the way guys follow sports fans, how they change their schedule to watch this man doing his thing. Uh, they're like, oh, Steve, are you saying that uh, sports fans are gay? Like, no, no, I know gay dudes. And gay dudes are a lot less faggy about the dudes they have a crush on than sports fans are. 
Gay dudes don't collect things that their sports crushes have signed. <laughs> gay dudes don't wear their sports. Gay dudes don't wear their crushes work uniform around with his name on the back of it. <laughs> sports fans are way gayer than gay dudes. I'm going to end with this one since uh, Chase gave me some of her time. Um, <laughs> Really excited, guys. I, I just learned that you can also use those abortion wires to hang up your clothes. That's great news. I'm Steve Schneider. Fantastic. Steve, I used your joke uh, about the uh, abortion wires. I was playing the game of Draw Something. And the word was hanger, but then I wrote on the picture, don't guess abortion wire, you joker. And then the person wrote back, you crossed the line and quit playing with me. Really? But they guessed the word hanger. <laughs> that was my favorite. I still want the three coins, but you're a jerk. I'm no longer playing with you. Ladies and gentlemen, we have four comedians left. Next up is Stu, followed by Ryan the Nanny. Please give a big welcome for Stu Smith. Yeah. He hustled up with two steps. Messing around, man. Got to get to you guys. Um, anyone else have kids in here? No? I'm the only one who fell for the uh, sweetheart. I'm not ovulating, and the doctor says I'm not fertile. Go ahead and come inside me. Just me. All right. You guys might fall for that later. Chase. Do that to somebody. Uh, I, I have a beautiful six-year-old daughter. She's pretty independent, uh, which is kind of cool. A few problems arise with that. Uh, she's not old enough to go into the ladies room by herself. Plus, half the time, she doesn't really wash her hands. So after taking her to public men's rooms with me, a couple problems. Um, some of you old guys and uh, some of the younger guys is it really necessary that you drop your pants all the way down to your knees when you pee and not the urinal? Is it really necessary to do that? That my daughter has to see your balls sagging down and your hairy ass as I try to get her into a stall? No, it's not necessary. Because I don't need to see it, actually. Another problem? Any graffiti artists here tonight? No? If you guys know one, would you tell them to stop creating their art on the back of the stalls in public men's rooms, please. Because I'm standing outside the stall and my daughter's inside and she says, Daddy, why does it say suck mine and there's a picture of a penis on the back of the door? Why would anyone want to suck on a penis, Dad? Wouldn't that, wouldn't that taste like pee? Yes, sweetheart, or bleach. So don't ever put a penis in your mouth. Your mom never wanted to, okay? And Daddy, there, there's a hole going into the other stall that says, stick it here for a good time. Can you see my tongue going? No, 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 sweetheart. Don't, don't stick your tongue into the... <laughs> Sorry, sir. She's six. She doesn't know about glory holes yet. Uh, since we're on the subject of balls a little bit, uh, I had a friend who had a testicular cancer scare recently. Um, actually had testicular cancer. Lost one of the twins. Other than that, he's fine. We think he's going to be okay. Um, I think most guys, when you hear that somebody has a little problem going on down there, you go straight to the doctor. Like, I could have, like, something hanging off my ear, maybe, like, smash a nail into the back of my hand. It's like, it's fine. Pour some vodka on it. But, like, I heard my buddy had testicular cancer. I immediately called my cardiologist to get a referral to the urologist because this area is connected to this area here. And they gave me a referral. They gave me a, uh, a female, a German, and an Asian guy. So I was like, you know, I haven't really been dating much lately. Things were a little slow. So I was like, you know what? If I'm going to be naked and have somebody's face down here, I'd, I'd, I'd rather it be a woman. Which could go a couple different ways. Like, I could go in there and get some serious shrinkage, stage fright. That's a problem. Or I get a big boner equally as embarrassing. And then I look her up online, and she's actually pretty hot. So I'm like, yeah, I think I'm, I'm, I'm going to do this. And, um, and then, I, then I started thinking, I don't know if you guys would agree with this. Most of us guys would think that 
when a woman's down there and you're naked in front of a female doctor, I think in the back of your mind, you're always hoping at some point she is going to stop the exam and go, wow, I normally don't say this, but you have an above average size penis. <laughs> like, I'm really not supposed to say this, but that is beautiful. Like, who, what rabbi did your circumcision? <laughs> like, look out Michelangelo, because this, this guy's an artist right here. Think about it. Uh, turns out um, the female doctor does not take my insurance, and I'm a Jew first and a guy second. So I look up the German guy online, and he has huge hands, and I realize that is probably not a good thing for my Jewish balls to be in his German baseball glove-sized hands. So I go with the Asian guy, and I'm thinking, you know what? I could have stage fright shrinkage with the Asian guy, and my dick's still going to look bigger than his. So I go to this guy, and uh, I do some manscaping um, the, the morning of, clean it up in the front, make it look a little bit longer, clean it up in the back just in case, you know? And uh, he comes in, I, I get naked, I'm standing there, he's got my shaft in his hand, and he's checking it for bumps, and then he's rolling my balls around his hands like he's in Vegas. <laughs> and it starts feeling good, and I put my hand on his shoulder, and, and my head goes back, and I'm pretty certain I moaned. At which point he says it's time for your prostate exam. You guys know where the prostate is? Up in the, yeah. So he says time for your prostate exam. That snapped me out of the little daydream I was in. And um, I realized why women are a little afraid when we come around from the back. Because I'm bent over and all lubed up. And he's like, it's just a couple fingers. That's the best way to check. And I'm thinking, whatever, throw three in there, Doc. Like <laughs> tiny fingers. It actually felt pretty good, guys. I can't be the only straight guy to realize it. This, this actually feels quite nice. It does. Lesson here, go get your prostate checked. And it was funny because as I was leaving, he says, uh, I just got to tell you, you have an above average size penis. <laughs> so I will be seeing him next Wednesday and every other Wednesday for the summer. <laughs> go get your balls and your prostate check. Thank you. Thank you, Stu. Say what you will about this open mic, but it's got to be better than getting your prostate checked every Wednesday at five. Um, especially if the prostate uh, doctor uh, has a live stream. That's probably not the best. Ladies and gentlemen, our final three comics of the evening are Ryan, Andy, and then Ray. Please welcome Ryan O'Flanagan. Oh, shit. Mm. Thanks, guys. I have a friend in med school who's like my age. He's, he's just doing that now. He's just doing the fingers thing now. He's just like my friend. He's just doing it. He just talks about it. That's crazy. And I'm just doing open mics, man. We took different paths. I'm making $9 an hour right now to move boxes around at this hotel in Santa Monica. That's why I just got I left at 5 o'clock. I just got here 10 minutes ago. And he's doing the fingers. He's doing the fingers. Good for you, Eddie. Eddie Medeiros. Uh, there's a cool thing you. I don't know why I sat down. That was weird. There's a cool thing you can do if you're like a cool, like a bully, like a cool kid, which uh, some of you might be. You, if you if you happen to be like on a pond on ice skates, one of the cool things you can do they do in movies. If there's like a like a punk ass bitch at the, in the ponds at the pond skating, you can skate up to him and you can stop short like that and you can spray all the ice on him. And that's awesome when people do that, like in, in movies and stuff. The cool kids will do that. And they get you stand over and like that. And he's like, oh, pfft, oh you. Yeah. And you look, that looks really cool, man. That's a cool thing you can do. And as, as cool as that is, that's probably the only cool thing you can do on ice skates, I think. That's the sad thing about ice skates. There's always that, that, weird, uh, that weird moment. That weird moment when you have to, have to if you're going to be one of those cool kids, you got you to feel like this. <laughs> I'll see you at the playground at 3 o'clock, punk. Be there. <laughs> so ice skates are cool. Like the coolest part about a fight, like if you, like if you knock someone out, like the coolest part is like, like, just like, just walk away. And walking away is the coolest part. And like hockey players, they just like beat the shit out of each other, and they're, like, they're some of like the toughest guys in the, in the whole world, you know, and just beat the shit out of them. And they're like, all right, to the penalty box. And you're like, oh, I'm not done, I'll see you later. <laughs> I'm going to glide, but I'll, I'll be back. I, I see you gliding around out there. I'm coming for you. 
Ice skating. It's not a cool thing, but hockey's pretty cool. They managed to make hockey pretty cool. Go Kings, huh? Ooh, game four tonight, guys. We could be in for some riots. Let's all go. Let's all go riot. L.A. Riot Comedy Festival. Just kidding. Don't get involved in that. Uh, what else? Oh, I, I do. I don't know what I want. Oh, uh, I, I, guys, I put the have fun in. I have fungal meningitis. <laughs> Jerks. I do this thing. I don't know if you guys do this. But sometimes I like I have like friends from back back home that I kind of like I think about and I kind of like miss them sometimes. I just do this thing where I'm, if I'm like driving around or walking around town, I kind of like pretend that they're there and I kind of like give them like a little tour. You know, it's like it's kind of weird. Not like out loud, just in my head. I'm like, oh, so there's an open mic there. Oh, there's a, oh, I used to live in an apartment down the street. It's kind of like weird, like in my head, kind of subconscious stuff. Which I didn't think was that weird until I decided to tell a friend, one of my friends, about it, like on Facebook. I hear myself saying, yeah, sometimes I, I picture that you're in my bathroom seat and I talk to you, pretend you're there. Oh, I'm sad. I just realized how sad I am. I'm real sad. He's like, you're serious? I'm like, nah, I'm joking. Nah. I don't do that, Nick. Eddie, who's Eddie again? And he told me about his fingers. All right. That one's a keeper, I think. Thanks, guys. <laughs> what is the deal? Uh, let's bring this one back. Oh, no, how about this? You guys ever sneeze? There it is. You guys ever, uh, you guys ever sneeze while driving? Yeah, it's terrifying. <laughs> it's a very dangerous thing. And I, it happens to me all the time, so often, because I'm allergic to cats. And unfortunately for me, I drive the pussy mobile. <laughs> but no, I killed a family of three in a crosswalk today. It's very dangerous, very dangerous thing. <laughs> Sneezing and driving. In conclusion, Yeah, that's it. I'm done. Thanks, guys. <laughs> Ryan Flanagan, ladies and gentlemen. We have two more comics. Andy, then Ray. Please welcome the stage. Andy! Here he is. People tell me I have long arms, and then they tell me to go fuck myself. Ta Taylors, specifically Taylors. <laughs> Vietnamese tailors. You guys are like, Andy, you don't look like you wear tailored clothing. You look like a like a mime that wants to go out into the wilderness with hiking boots on. In which case you wouldn't need the white face paint. So that makes sense. It's good that you didn't paint your face white, Andy. Good job. Uh, this shit tastes like it was cooked at sea level. That is the punchline to a joke about high altitude cooking instructions. <clears throat> it doesn't seem to be working here at sea level. <laughs> Chef Javier is a master of the French cuisine. Unfortunately, it is the opinion of this reviewer his skills would best be suited below 5,000 feet. <laughs> that was the tag. <laughs> What is there, a restaurant uh, owner in Boulder? Still clinging to the dream? And that was the setup <clears throat> for the development of the tag. I had a dream uh, that I was driving down Western Avenue and that within five minutes I saw an out of business scuba shop in Koreatown. A guy with a Phantom of the Opera mask on, standing on the corner, a little Phantom of the Opera mask. Uh, and then I saw two, um, I don't know, what's the term, cross-dressing African-American gentlemen having an argument? I don't know, that's a high wire act. You can try to describe what the people were. They're having an argument, and they got done with the argument. They resolved their cross-dressing related issues. And they both got into respective Mercedes. And then I was doing stand-up uh, at a comedy club in Hollywood on La Brea. Uh, that was the dream. Um, I don't know if you
you can hear in my voice, I, I have a little bit of a hitch. I wasn't feeling very well, and I decided to lick the touch, touch screen of the red box machine at the Ralphs in Koreatown. <laughs> I wasn't feeling good about myself. Yeah. Sort of like an ATM machine, except uh, what you're taking out is, is uh, sadness, loneliness. <laughs> That's what I think of the, the time machine at the red box. The, that's the time machine? I don't, time machine? That's interesting. My brain, somewhere in the back, thinks the red box machine is also a time machine. I don't feel like I'm in charge up here a lot of times, and that one really reminds me that something else is going on. It would be interesting if the red box machine was a time machine. Uh, it's like, okay, what year do you want to go to? Uh, 2054. And what movie do you want to rent? <laughs> <laughs> Alien versus Predator, let's go. Take me to the future, red box machine. Please enter your email address. Oh, fuck it, I don't want spam. I'm going to the future. <laughs> Um, I'm not going to talk about relationships because I don't have much time left, but I just want to talk about one tiny thing about relationships, and that's the screening process. Uh, before you get into a relationship, make sure it's, if the person is not driving a very common car, like a green Honda Civic, because when you break up, you're going to see that fucking car everywhere. <laughs> everywhere. <laughs> I figured it out one time, at any given intersection in Los Angeles, there's about a 20% chance that the person in the car next to me knows I can't get it up on Sunday nights, because I'm depressed. Yeah, one night, Andy. It's one night of the week. Good job. Way to narrow it down for uh, comedic effect. Uh, let's end with that. I have ripped out this function. Fantastic, Andy. I think the red box machine is kind of a time machine. Um, because as you say, it's dispensing loneliness. But not really at that time. It's like you're paying it a dollar to commit to a night of loneliness. Like even if something comes up, you've paid a dollar for that loneliness. You are invested. Ladies and gentlemen, our final comedian of the night and of the season, all the way from Australia, please welcome Ray!
Um, I like how. Uh, oh, this is uh, this is funny because it's just a room full of comics <coughs> and people that know comedy. I did crazy people come to do comedy. This is a pretty normal group of people. This is a very normal group of people. But you get some pretty crazy people. And over here, because comedy is really popular, you get some really fucking crazy people. I went to the improv the other week to do uh, an open spot, and I saw a lady, and I'm not making this up or anything, I don't even know where this is gonna go, but she had, uh, she must have been in the mid 60s, uh, she had pom-poms, and she was dressed as a cheerleader, but that, that was all pretty strange. And this was the first time that she was ever trying comedy. She was going around introducing everyone, telling, her, telling us that uh, in the bar beforehand. But the, the big kicker for me was that she had a name tag on, like a personalised little name tag that she made, like a metal, metallic one with her name engraved on it. And underneath her name, she'd engraved comedian. <laughs> like that's, <laughs> she didn't worry about material, she didn't worry about uh, stagecraft or anything like that. She's just like, once I've got the name tag with my job title underneath it, uh, pretty much set, really. Uh, I'll just turn up and I'll say, look, I want a spot. And they say, what do you do? I'm like, having your original tag. Yeah. I've been promoted, none of these girls have. So. Um, yeah. um, I smoke, which is stupid. You know, I used to like, not smoke it quit and then I started again and I don't, don't really like it that much, you know, so I don't, this, oh yeah, you know, it's just one of those things you don't think about. And I like to, uh, I've noticed over here, you sell cigarettes in the same, in like pharmacy places, or pharmacy, <laughs> is that a, yeah, you sell cigarettes in, that doesn't happen in Australia, that's pretty weird, that's crazy. And so I can go into this, like yeah, I'd like to take up smoking please, and do you have anything for me to quit smoking also. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this pack of cigarettes and these nicotine patches I like how they've got a big selection of cigarettes too. It's like, um, I like to fuck with the guys working there and walk in there and go, um, do you have anything with a subtle mold tasting, uh, a little oaky, and, um, I don't know. <laughs> uh, parking meters are everywhere over here too. We don't really, have many parking, oh yes we do, we've got parking meters in Australia, we don't drive to the city much. Um, and, <laughs> sorry, I don't know what the fuck I was <laughs> But the other day, I'm using the parking meters, I'm not, I'm not a regular with the parking meters, that's what I'm trying to say. And I'm using the parking meter, and I'm just getting a sandwich, I put in heaps of coins, because I don't know how you get rid of your coins over here, because they just keep piling up, and especially the pants, like the, you can't, I put them in the parking meter and the time didn't even go up. Like, it didn't even want, you know? I just kept putting them in there and it's doing nothing. Anyway, put in a bit of money, a bit more than I realised, and I had quite a little bit, quite a bit of time in the parking meter. Now, all I wanted to do was get a sandwich, but because I had time in this parking meter, it's only like 70 fucking cents, I felt obliged to use up my time in the meter, you know? <laughs> so I'm going around doing stuff that I didn't want to do for extra time to wait for this meter to go all the way down. And um, I, uh, it's kind of a metaphor for what's going on here, you know, I, I'm uh, <laughs> trying to do material just to uh, do all the time. No, no, I, um, yeah, no, actually it is. Um, okay, I better end with my best ever joke ever. So uh, this is it, it's super good. So, all right, I hope it gets a Anyway. Uh, it's London Olympics coming up, and London, it's the Olympics in the future, right? It's the Olympics in uh, 2096, and it's been held in Tunisia, and by then Tunisia are uh, an up-and-coming country, and they've got everything, their economy is like almost the strongest in the world, and this uh, Olympics is going to do them the world of good. The medal count, the gold medal count, which is usually always USA, and Australia, and England, and, and always... Uh, Pretty highly contested. Tunisia is up there. They're, they're second. They've never had this before. They're actually on par with the USA for the most gold medals. And it comes down to this last race, right? Uh, it's a 100 metre sprint. Tunisia, and uh, there's a competitor from the United States as well in the race. And the race starts. They both run, start running. They get into the 100 metre line. It's just so neck and neck. It's closer, 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 closer. 
just before the finish line, the Tunisian guy trips over. Right? Trips over and the US over A win and win the gold medal. Um, and then the camera crew come over to the Tunisian guy and the Tunisian guy's laughing. He's laughing out loud. He's got a big smile on his face. And they say to him, what's so funny? And he looks down the barrel of the camera and he says, Anyway, the rest of that next week, so uh, <laughs> please help me then. And uh, yeah, thanks for having me, so that's <laughs> All right, season cliffhanger, ladies and gentlemen. What is the Tunisian guy? And also, where is Tunisia located on that? Us people in the States have no idea if that's a made up country or not. Ladies and gentlemen, that is it for Hollywood Stands Up on Mike Live. Thank you so much for being here tonight and all season long. We'll see you guys in the fall. Have a great summer. Get some new material. I hope I can, at least. Thank you. Good night. <laughs>